Hey guys, how's it going and welcome back. So today's video is the Yamaha DGX 670 uh, portable grand piano. Um, well, it's a piano, it's a synthesizer, it's everything. Anyways, I want to show you guys how to get into the mic settings and how to adjust them when you're going to plug a microphone into the back of this unit because uh, it does support it. And so we're going to press the mic setting button, which is over on the far side. Um, I've got things zoomed here, but let's uh, let's bring this out. So over here we have mic settings. So we're just going to press that. And uh, I'm going to just zoom back in a little bit here. So hopefully you can get a good view of all this. All right, so once your mic is plugged in, you do have to set up things like the gain. Um, if, if you want to mess with the reverb effect, but check it first and see if it's what you want. So turn on your mic. One, two, three, four. One, two, one, two, three. I want to be free. So try a little bit of acapella stuff, right? And um, see if that sort of echo or, or reverb effect is going to work for you. You can also add in a bit of chorus if you wanted to as well. Now, the default volume is set at 100%. Um, you can manipulate that back and forth, but you're going to have to play at the same time, you know, at whatever you know, amount of pounding you're going to do on the keys, because the keys are touch sensitive, right? So if you type lightly, you know, it's going to be a very light sound, right? Um, and of course, going on from that. So the majority of your songs, you're gonna kinda want that volume set at a level where it's gonna mix right so that you can still be heard over top of the piano, regardless. I tend to leave these things on full volume uh, for the mic um, because people also tend to move in and out away from the mic within you know a couple of inches and that does make a difference on you know how things are sounding. Um, it's just a habit we all have. Uh, the gain is a very important area. Now there is a default gain setting that will happen, um, but you can adjust from there. Now you're only going to be able to use a dynamic microphone, okay, and it must have an XLR two quarter inch plug on it. Um, <coughs> microphones like, uh, say for example, the Shure SM57 uh, and 58. Now, though you could use those cables, you're not going to get much out of the microphone. Okay, there's something about those mics that they would require some sort of a transformer jobby thingy. Uh, Long McQuaid was explaining a little bit about that to me yesterday uh, when I picked up the PGA 48, which is actually the best suited microphone, at least from Shure, um, for doing this with, and it actually comes with a quarter inch cable um, for XLR to quarter inch, or you can get the mic uh, as a XLR to XLR, which this does not support XLR. Um, as far as the keyboard side goes, uh, or you can get the mic with no cable and then just buy what you need. Uh, so whichever way you want to do it. But the PGA 48 is a microphone that I would highly recommend for these pianos um, that do have microphone input because they do seem to be about the best vocal mic out there for that purpose because they are geared toward not only speech, they are also geared toward karaoke, which you're kind of doing a karaoke thing anyways when you're talking piano and um, microphone combined, right? Because you're playing and singing songs. So in the case of regular karaoke, you're just singing along with a song. But the gain is one area that you have to be cautious about because you need to have a lot of gain for any dynamic microphone, period. But all gain systems work differently. In the case of, uh, I have the Shure PGA 48, the gain needs to be set at about 87, um, which would be somewhere around well, 80, 85% is actually around 3 o'clock, so not quite 3.30 kind of thing, um, you know, type of thing. 3.30, even almost around that 4 o'clock range. Uh, actually, no, let me do the math again. Sorry, 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock is middle, uh, so that's half. 1, 2, 3. Um, yeah, so about 3.30, quarter to 4-ish, I guess, would be about 87% right um, but either way 87 is where I found the sweet spot for this mic and it works fine different mics will work different ways and of course the cheaper the mic you use well it's gonna be cheap anyhow so we do have a DSP area as well we can go into detail we can mess around with all this stuff in here alright so we've got delays we've got distortions we got EQ and comp 
uh, compressor, modulation. Uh, right now we're at legacy. Um, we have chorus three, which is something we can use. Um, we have reverb uh, areas as well. We can monkey around with a lot of this stuff and have a lot of fun. Um, we can also go into the main EQ area as well. Um, and of course, master EQ, compressor, set up those settings the way we want them, uh, filter, volume, pan, etc. Okay. Um, and then when in doubt, hit escape and back in and you're fine. Now, with the reverb, I think 18 is actually a kind of a really good range because you need some wetness on your voice anyways. But if you do need to change it, you know, up or down, you can use, you use these buttons here. Uh, so we push that one and we bring it up. We push the below, the number five, it brings it back down, okay? So as an example here of one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, 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 two, nothing. So this is like dry. Now you don't want dry vocals ever for a vocalist. One, two, three, four, and I wanna be. Yeah, okay. It's kinda hard to do one handed with two chords. Um, and I. That's not bad. One, two, one, two. Um, so then we, you know, burn it up a little bit. Say 15. One, two. And I want to be. Okay. Um, kind of thing. Um, I, I got a cast on my wrist, as many of you know right now, so it's kind of hard to actually play play, but, um, you know, but you, you got to kind of get that sound where you want it, right? Because when you listen to your piano part, there's a certain amount of echo or reverb already there on the piano, right? So you got to kind of have probably just a little bit more wetness than what the piano has. Uh, kind of thing and you'll be fine. So 15 is an option, right? I, I like it at 18. 18 seems to work best uh, for what I use this thing for. Um, but then you can pan, of course, left and right kind of deal uh, with the speakers. Um, and of course, then you have another settings area up here. And this is where you EQ your vocals. Okay, so and the EQ is controlled by again all these numbers up and down, up and down, and they go into each little category because you have like a, a mid range and then kind of a sweep. You've got the low and then like a sweep, and same with your high, same deal, right? Um, and each person's voice, male or female, makes no difference. There's no industry standard that says all male voices use this EQ setting and all females use this. That's that's complete bull, okay because all of our vocal ranges are different and the fact that we have different voices, period, um, you need to EQ your voice to what sounds the best, okay? Especially for you, but you know, what does sound the best? Um, and then away you go, but you control all those perimeters here with the same keys. It's just a matter of these are lit up, so we want a bit of low there, right? Or we can lower it. Now, three key, that's gonna control our low here and we can add more bass or we can remove bass and sometimes more is actually less believe it or not so that's another thing to keep in mind um, you know you may think that somebody needs more bass well no they probably need less bass but you need to adjust their mid-range properly or their, their, their treble is too high that should be adjusted properly you know lower, lower the high end to, to compensate for the for the bass or whatever you need to do. Mids are more for punching uh, more through, but you gotta wash the punch because otherwise too much mid, you got nasal issues, right? Um, if you exit from here and then you go back into mic settings, um, you can see that I didn't save any of these settings. So it's back to where I last programmed. But when you do wanna save something, you just press the select save button and that's gonna be here, okay? and then you would hit the corresponding uh, one for this and you click save. So we want save, so it's actually the bottom number. New memory, at this point we can cancel, say okay, whatever. Um, I've already set mine, but you know, you can set yours. You can even apparently give these things names. That I gotta figure out how to do that part because that's kind of interesting. But um, anyway, so we'll exit out of here and we exit here and we exit here and boom, we're right back to But 
anyway, to get the idea, that's the mic setting, all right, which is something I promised you guys we'd go through. Um, I have a lot more tutorial videos coming up as well. Um, one of the things that I wanted to um, figure out is all those extra sounds, right, like helicopters and streams and thunders, and we actually found that out uh, yesterday along the quake, so I'll be doing a video on how to get into that. I'm still not sure if I got the right sound for a helicopter, if they changed the helicopter, but it actually, if that is what that sound is, it sounds pretty good compared to the last one uh, on previous keyboards. A lot of new sounds are in this keyboard compared to previous versions of the DGX, um, and just so many more enhancements, but they've also made things so much simpler as well at the same time in many ways. But that's today's video for the mic. Hope you enjoyed that video. Um, and stay tuned for more on the uh, Yamaha DGX 670. See ya.